Russian nationalist Igor Girkin's comrade and Russian war correspondent Mikhail Polinkov, who previously served in one of the Russian units, made alarming statements about the current state of affairs at the front for the Russian Federation. He spoke about the commander of his regiment who sends soldiers to certain death. His confessions were noticed by Ukrainian journalist and blogger Denis Kazansky. The occupier claims that recently he spoke with former comrades who managed to survive the recent battles. According to him, an entire battalion of the Russian army, up to 950 people in which he served, was almost completely destroyed. Moreover, wounded Russian soldiers are not even evacuated from the battlefield. About 50 people remained on the front lines with varying degrees of severity and will probably die at the front in field conditions. I spoke with fellow soldiers who survived. The second battalion was practically destroyed. There are 50 people lying on the battlefield and no one is taking them away, he said, emphasizing the difficult conditions in which the Russians found themselves. The Ukrainian military intelligence directorate earlier reported that Russian commanders are attempting to preserve military equipment by forbidding drivers from evacuating wounded servicemen or providing supplies to units that have advanced too far refusing to risk equipment to evacuate wounded personnel on the battlefield other than in extraordinary circumstances is a remarkable violation of core principles of military professionalism. Such behavior can have serious impacts on morale and the willingness of soldiers to fight and risk getting injured beyond their own defensive lines. The Ukrainian military also evacuates Russian troops which were injured for medical treatment. Recently, a Russian prisoner has recorded a video message to Russians and told about his experience of participating in the war with Ukraine. He warns others against going to the front, saying that it is a one-way ticket. He signed a contract for one year, but it was a scam. The Russian army command leaves everyone at the front until the end of the war, sending former prisoners to a penal battalion. State propaganda has admitted that Russia is seriously lagging behind Ukraine in the field of drone production. On Solovyov's talk show, one of the experts in the studio suddenly for the guests and the host began to praise Ukraine, which was able to create a real industry of unmanned systems with a large number of independent developers and a standardization system. Moreover, according to the Russian expert, Ukraine has become the first country in the world where a separate unit of unmanned systems forces has been created in the army. According to the guest, Ukraine has successfully established cooperation in the area of UAVs with China, which, according to the Russians, is one of Moscow's main allies. Wait, how is that possible? You told us that Ukraine is country 404, mired in poverty and corruption and about to fall apart on its own. And now, it turns out that Russia is lagging behind, even this country? How did this happen? And what did those trillion dollar defense budgets go on? The Russian Telegram channel Seattle Vetra comments on the video. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky announced that the country is now capable of manufacturing up to 4 million drones annually, underscoring its commitment to boosting local production. Before the Russian invasion in February 2022, Ukraine had virtually no drone production. In the very difficult conditions of a full-scale war, when Russia was constantly attacking, Ukrainians managed to create a practically new defense industry, Zelensky said. Ukraine tripled its total domestic arms production in 2023 and then doubled it again in the first eight months of this year. Prime Minister Denis Shmihal announced at the same meeting. Ukrainian officials did not provide specific figures. In its 31-month war with the aggressive Russians, which has no end in sight, Ukraine is currently spending about half of its national budget on defense or about 40 billion US dollars. Ukraine also receives a great deal of military and financial support from its Western allies. North Korea may send members of its armed forces to Ukraine to support the Russian army, South Korean Defense Minister Kim Jong-hyun said. Yonhap reports. Since Russia and North Korea have signed a mutual treaty similar to a military alliance, the possibility of such a deployment is very likely, he noted during parliamentary hearings. 
Kim added that recent news about the elimination of North Korean soldiers in the occupied territory of Ukraine is most likely true. Yonhap added that the statement by the South Korean Defense Minister came at a time when the North Korea intends to strengthen ties with Russia, as evidenced by a bilateral agreement that includes a clause on mutual defense. It is known that the agreement was signed by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian leader Vladimir Putin during negotiations that took place in June of this year. The strength of ties between North Korea and Russia was reflected in a birthday message that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un sent to President Vladimir Putin on his 72nd birthday. Sending his congratulations, Kim called Putin my closest comrade, saying that relations between their countries had developed into invincible alliance relations and eternal strategic relations, following Putin's visit to Pyongyang in June. Meetings and camaraderie ties between us to be continued in the future will make a positive contribution to further consolidating the eternal foundation of the DPRK, Russia friendship and strategic and cooperative relations, Kim said, cited by the North's state-run Korean Central News Agency or KCNA. Kim's friendly message to Putin came a day after Kim and Chinese President Xi Jinping exchanged messages to mark the 75th anniversary of their country's relations, which were less effusive and shorter than in the past, hinting at cooler ties. As reported, the Ukrainian armed forces killed six North Korean officers in Donbass and three more North Korean servicemen were wounded. According to Kiev Post, before this attack, Russian occupiers allegedly showed their North Korean colleagues how their military was preparing for assault operations. At the same time, the chairman of the Council of Reservists of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Taimochko, stated that the appearance of the North Korea military could be a potential threat, not only for Ukraine, but also for other states. North Korea is a madly militarized country in which the entire population is pumped through the army one way or another and the loss of a few people there is not so important. However, what is important is that those North Korea military, if they received any information or skills because they do not just end up in Russia, have passed a certain selection. Now they are destroyed and will not be carriers of certain information, he explained.